We are welcome to the National Restoration Altar tonight. And we want to continue on our teaching and understanding the ethics of Christian ministry. That is the do and don't of Christian ministers that will make the rapture. At the beginning of this teaching, we said that every we are we are called to make disciples. And, uh, and when you become a, uh, you are called to become a disciple, the a disciple is meant to grow to become a disciple. And we said every family, every parent is a disciple, is a, is a minister to the children. And we said every child is a minister to his peers and his classmates. So in one way or the other, we are all ministers. We must know what we are supposed to do. This teaching has been on going to seven to eight months now. Amen. Amen. Today we are looking at the 29th ethics of Christian ministry. The 29th ethics. And we say ethics are moral values. There are moral standards. Amen. There are moral principles that guide an organization and institution an establishment, a group of people, the moral codes, the way of life, the things we should do and things we ought not to do. And we said when we started this teaching that the rascality we see today in the church or in the Christian ministry is due to the fact that uh, people are not being taught the code of conducts. The code of conduct are not made known. People don't understand. They just jump into Christianity and do what they feel and live their life anyhow, teach what they want to teach. And then uh, one of our texts has been First Timothy 4, 16. It says, take it to yourself and to your daughter so that you'll be able to save both yourself and your hearers. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 9, 27 or so is also one of our core scripture in this teaching. Amen. That after you have done this, yourself you know be cast away say run in such a way as to win the prize amen, amen. the lord will help us in jesus name amen. so at the 29 ethics we want to look at the the ethics of the fruit of repentance the ethics of the fruit of repentance so our text this day is uh, luke chapter 3 because we say this teaching is a, is a holistic review of the entire New Testament. I mean, the epistles and the, and the, 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 the gospels. We have finished with the epistles. We are reviewing the gospels now. We are in the book of Luke review. And uh, we said we are looking at both what the early church taught and what they did. Their practices and their doctrines and their teachings. So in this 29 ethics, we're actually looking at what John the Baptist taught, preached. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're looking at what did John the Baptist. John the Baptist was the one who, who terminated the Old Testament prophet. And then he's actually a go between between the Old and the New Testament. Amen. He's a prophet that uh, the Bible says that uh, all the prophets before, no one is as great as John the Baptist, yet he's the least in the kingdom. So John the Baptist, one leg was in the Old Testament, one leg was in the New Testament. So he actually was a man who prepared the way for the New Testament. Let's go to Luke chapter 3. Can we begin to read from verse 1? Let's look at it holistically. It was now the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius. Go to verse 5. There about, let me see. The valleys will be filled. Okay, okay, then 3. Isaiah, okay. mm. Then John went from place to place on both sides of the Jordan River. John did what? He went for where? From place to place where? On, On both sides side of the Jordan, Jordan River. River. Uh -huh. Preaching that people should be baptized mm -hmm. to show that they are turned to God to receive forgiveness for their sins. Now, the, what John was teaching, John was calling people to repentance. Amen. Amen. So, and we should understand that the gospel of Jesus began with the place of what? With the call to what? Call to repentance. So a man or woman who neglect the call to repentance have actually what? 
has actually neglected the foundation of the gospel. The foundation of the gospel of Jesus is what? Is the call to repentance. Amen. The primary message of the gospel is what? Is the call to what? The call to repentance. Amen. And the first proof that you agree to this call of to repentance is what? Is that you are taken to the water and be baptized. So to be baptized in water is to agree to repentance. Is to believe and accept the gospel of repentance. The message of repentance. So water baptism, like we said on the chain, is what? It's what, it's, it's, it's what is a sign. It was seals the word, the acceptance, amen, the belief and acceptance of the message of repentance. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let me go through the read again. Then John went from place to place on both sides of the, of the Jordan River, mm -hmm. preaching that people should be baptized to show that they have turned to God to receive forgiveness for their sins. Mm -hmm. For, as I had spoken of John when he said, mm -hmm. He's a voice shouting in the wilderness. Prepare the way for the Lord's coming. So the, the assignment of John the Baptist was a preparation, a preparation assignment. So when we preach repentance, what are we doing? We are preaching what? We are doing preparation. Yeah, uh -huh, continue. Prepare the way for the Lord's coming. Mm -hmm. Clear the road for himself, for him. Mm -hmm. The valleys will be filled and the mountains and hills made, le made level. Leveled, yes. The curves will be straightened mm -hmm. and the rough places made smooth. Mm -hmm. And then all people will see as the salvation sent from God. Mm. So, you see, Nabam, so the salvation sent for the Lord will be seen when some things are done. Your life will reflect the glory of the Lord. It will become evidence in your life that you are born again, that you are saved. Amen. If you are able to what? To repent. Amen. So, repentance is, is meant to what? To make people to see God's salvation. That, ah! This person's life has changed. Something that happened. Something marvelous that happened in your life. Amen. The word, the crooked part must be strengthened. Amen. The valley must be what? Must be covered. Amen. And the, and the mountain must be leveled. The message of the Lord may say, prepare ye the word, the way of the Lord. Because God can never visit an unprepared people and an unprepared man. If the Lord must visit a people, they must be prepared. If the Lord must visit a person, the person must what? Must be prepared. And this was the message that John the Baptist heralded. It's been prophesied by Isaiah. The voice of the one crying the word and is preparing the way of the Lord. And here continue from where you stop. Which verse are you now? Verse 7. Okay. When the crowds came to John for baptism. So when people heard this thing, they rushed and came to John the Baptist to be baptized. Uh -huh. You brought us snakes. Who wanted to flee God's coming of? Prove by the way you live that you have repented of your sin and turned to God. Don't just say to each other, we are safe, for we are descendants of Abraham. Now, John required that if you say you have repented, what is the next thing? You must prove it. I must prove that I am a, I am what? I have repented. I have been what? I have been baptized. I must prove it. You are a Christian. You must what? You must prove your Christianity. And that is where we are stuck today. That we are no longer talking about the issues of what? Of proving our what? Our Christianity. Our repentance must be proven. How? By our what? Bringing forth fruit. That what? That meet repentance. John the Baptist does not just preach repentance alone, but he preached what? He preached what? The fruit of repentance. 
But we have, we have a deviation today because of lack of understanding of ethics of Christian ministry. So a lot of pastors preach the gospel that has no proof of repentance. That is not the gospel of Jesus. Amen. A gospel that has no word, that has no proof of repentance. And all that we show as a proof of our repentance and our bonegenism is what? Is that we speak in tongues. Is that we go to church. Is that we, some, some people that they give their tithe and offering. Some that they are pastors, that they are deacons, that they are deaconesses. Some that they are what? They are choir members. Some that they are ushers. That is the proof. That they go for evangelism. Amen. They go for outreach. That is the proof. No! 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 We will understand what John the Baptist is saying. What did he say? Yeah, he's still in verse 7. Read verse 7 all over again. When the crowds came to him, the crowd came to him. He said what to them? To John for baptism. He uh -huh. said, mm -hmm. You brood of snakes. Mm -hmm. Who warned you to flee God's coming wrath? Mm -hmm. Eight. Prove by the way you live. Prove by what? The way you live. You must prove by what, eh? By the way you live. Mm -hmm. That you have repented of your sins and turned to God. Don't just say to each other. We are safe, for we are descendants of Abraham. That means nothing, for I tell you... God now, if somebody repents and claim to have repented and turned to the Lord, if the person cannot prove it by the way he lives, what is the person? Everything is what? Nonsense. Is that not your Bible? Am I the one that says so? It becomes nonsense when you cannot prove. How do you prove it? How? By the way, it's man, and by the way you leave, verse 8. Say, let me see from another version. What do you want? Read verse 8 from King James. I read verse 8 from NIV. Bring forth verse. therefore fruits worthy of repentance, mm -hmm. and begin not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able to, able of these stones to raise up children unto himself. So you see, bring forth what? Fruits. Children unto God. That what? That meets repentance. I love the way NLT put it. Say, prove by the way. Let me see how the NIV put it. Verse 8. Produce fruits in keeping with repentance. Produce fruits in keeping with what? In repentance. Uh -huh. And do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you that, uh, that out of these stones, God shall raise up children for Abraham. The Go to verse 9. Mm -hmm. The earth is already at the root of mm -hmm. the trees. Mm -hmm. And every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. Now, he said every word. Three. Three. When you got born again, you became what? Three. You are like a tree that is meant to what? That is meant to produce fruits. You are what? Like a tree. When you got born again, what happened to you? You became a tree planted by the rivers that are supposed to bring what fruit. And John the Baptist said, if this tree does not bring fruit, what happened to it? It will be cut down and be thrown into where? What happened to it? It will be thrown into fire. And which fire is that talking about here? Hell fire. So you can be born again and end up in hell. That is what the Bible is saying. You can what? You can be born again. You can be saved by grace and end up in hell. Why would you end up in hell? Because you did not prove that you were that you have turned to the Lord by the way you live your life. By what? The way the life you live is a proof of whether you are born again or not. Not the things you say. What, what is a proof? It is the life that you live that is a proof of who you are. Not the things you say. Am I, am I saying something this evening? Yes. What's the proof of who you are? The life you live is a proof of where you belong. Whether to hell or to heaven. Amen. What's the proof of where you belong? The life you live. And that is why he said, Titus 2, tell us verse 15, 16. He said, for the conf with their lips, they confess that they know him. He said, but don't they have every word they are what? They are good for nothing. Reprobate. It's not about your confession. It's not about you. John told them, come on. It's not about what you have come to say. Oh, eh, that you have come to accept now and be baptized. It's not the matter. Amen. This is actually what? 
an introduction is an, is an initiation. Because I said in the teaching of baptism that baptism is what? Is an initiation. You have been initiated into a sect. Into what? Into a court. That court is a court where people live life. And what is their life? The life of holiness and godliness and righteousness. So, the moment you stop living that life, what happens to you? You will be, he said, the axe is what? He said, not will be laid. He said, the axe is already what? At the bottom of the tree. Not that it will be laid. It is already there. If you refuse to bear fruit, what happens to you? You will be hewn down. Many have been hewn down and they don't know that they have been pruned off. And John 15 says this. Amen. Say, my father is the vine, is the vine dresser. Any vine that refuse the word, that refuse to bear fruit, shall be pruned, shall be cut off. The branch that refuse to bear fruit will be cut off and shall be thrown to the fire. And many people in church today, they have already, they have already, they are cut off branches, but they are still coming to church. They are still pastors. They are still evangelists. They are still bishops. They are still deacons. They are still choir members and choir masters and choir leaders. They are still singing Christian music, Christian songs. They are star Christian artists. They are star artists. They sing. People celebrate them as, as great Christian ministers. But they are what? They are cut off branches. They'll be what? They'll be cut off. They've been disconnected. They've been removed from the branch. But yet they are doing ministry. Amen. Amen. And they don't know this truth. And their trans security message have come to great great. The devil now sponsor the gospel from the pit of hell. And they call it the trans security. Once saved, forever saved. Hyper grace message. From the very pit of hell. It can it, it has no place in the Bible. Both in the in the gospel and the epistle, it has no place in the Bible. The axe is at the bottom. Amen. So we are meant to live a life to prove that we are what? That we have what? That we have repented. Today, the greatest error today is that today Christianity is what? Has been what? Has been greatly be what? Has greatly been, be what? been uprooted from this foundation. These are the ancient landmark. Amen. You must bring we must prove our repentance. We must prove that we are saved. We are born again by what? By the life that we are living. So as the Father has sent me, so I send you. Breathe upon them in John 20. I say, receive ye life. Receive ye life. It is life that He gave to us. We should live John 20, 19. He said, receive ye life. He said he became a minister by the power of an endless life. He's a minister of life. He's a, he's a, he's a, what? He's a ministry of life. It is the Melchizedek order of priesthood where life is dispensed. It is a life ministry. Amen. And the axe is at the bottom of the tree. And that is what we see in Revelation chapter, chapter, three, chapter 2, verse 6. The Lord talking about what? Amen. So remember from where you are fallen. Amen. They had fallen. They've fallen. Yeah, they don't know. And return back to your first love. You can fall away. You can apostatize. You can backslide. You can turn away. Hebrews 6 says that. From where you read from verse 6. So those who are once enlightened, who have all tasted of the good word of God, who, who have tasted of the who are filled with the Holy Spirit. He said, if they shall fall away, say it becomes impossible to bring them back. You can fall from your steadfastness. The axe is laid away at the bottom of the tree. Let's go further. Let's read further. I think we have a stand now. Where are we? Wonder, yeah, continue. Read from verse 9. Wonder. From the NLT. From... Go to verse 10. Go to verse 10. Verse 10. Go to verse 10. Mm -hmm. Now, you have not. Have you read verse ten? No. I said you should read from verse ten. Why you go to verse ten? Verse ten is the crowd asked, "What should we do?" Okay, the crowd, the hearing what John the Baptist was preaching. 
They heard this message of John the Baptist. And they cried out, Ah, man of God, if this is, this, if it's, if this is how things are, eh? if it's not just about uh, coming to see, I give a life to, to Jesus, but I need to bear the fruit, what then shall we do? Eh, read on, eh, continue from there. Mm -hmm. If you have two sheds, give one to the poor. Now, John is replying them now what it means to bear the word, the fruit of repentance. What it means to live the word, to live a life worthy of repentance. That is, the people ask, the, the crowd asks John, what, what, do you, what do we now do? How do we live this life? Because you know, they were brought up under people that were called hypocrites. The Pharisees and Sadducees. Who would preach one thing and do another thing? Amen. It was a compromised system like our system today. It was what? It was a hypocritical system. Compromise. Hypocr hypocrisy. On every side. Hypocrites. Bible says they transverse the length in Matthew 23. He said they transverse between uh, length and breadth and to the sea and make pro silent. That is, they got covered. He said, but they make them twice children of hell. It's a blind guide of the blind. Woe to you, scribes and you Pharisees. You blind leaders of the blind. See, when the blind lead the blind, they end up in ditches. Hypocrites. They were, they were doing a manner of perverse things. Their life was contrary to their, to, their, to, 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 to their words and to the ministry they represented. The people said, John, what shall we do? What the, how, how? What do you mean? And John the Baptist in, the, in response, in explaining what it means to bear the fruit of repentance, which is our 29 acts in Christian ministry, He says what? What do you do? Hey, continue. Read on. Mm -hmm. What do you say they should do? John Which verse is that? 11. Verse 11. Okay. Hey. If you have two shirts, give one to the poor. Now, so caring for the poor is part of the life that Amen. Is part of what? The life, the life that we are supposed to live. Amen. Caring for what? Caring for the poor. Caring for what? For the poor. It's part of the life that we are supposed to live. You have how many clues? Two. How many clues do you have? Two. What do you do? Give one to the poor. So, in explaining the poor, we must be consigned with the poor. The state, the welfare of the poor. For the poor, you always have among you. So, a church that neglects the poor is a church that is not bearing the word, the fruit of the spirit, the fruit of repentance. The poor, of course, the poor, the poor and needy goes together. Because the poor needs, the poor is a needy person. And what is the second thing? They say two things in that verse. Let me hear. If you have food, you do what? You share with those who are hungry. So it therefore means that if I have food and I don't share with the hungry and I'm sleeping in church every day, I go to church every day, I'm a committed church member. Amen. And I have neighbors who are hungry who are naked, I don't care for them. What do you think I'm doing? Am I bringing fruit meat for repentance? Mm. No way. So you see, this thing is, is what? And that was why in Matthew chapter 19, the rich man who came to Jesus said, what should I do to the kingdom of heaven? Jesus told him, keep the commandment. He said, all this I have done for my youth. He said, okay. Jesus looked at him and said, go and sell all that you have. Give to the poor and do what? Come and what? Come and follow me. And they
So this is part of what it is to what? To bear the fruit of repentance. To feed the hungry. To clothe the naked. To visit the, the sick. To help the poor. Amen. But we don't teach this thing today now. Somebody was preaching one time ago and said eh, that eh, when you are struggling to, to climb to the top, you should not give to the poor, that you should give to the rich, the wealthy, the great. That when you are up, then you start giving to the poor. That is a lie from the pit of hell. It's not gospel. Amen. Amen. James 1 27 says, Pure and undefiled joy before the Father is one. Is to visit the orphans, the widows, to care for the orphans, the widows, the poor, to clothe the naked. Is that not James chapter 1? James 1 to 7 says, Pure and undefiled religion. And to keep oneself unspotted from this world. Praise the Lord. These are the realities of the Bible. Speaking in tongues cannot take you to heaven if you don't do these things. Yes, it is wonderful to be baptized of the Holy Ghost. Yes, you are welcome to the kingdom. Because without being baptized of the Holy Ghost, water and the Spirit, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. I mean the kingdom of God, not heaven. And when you enter the kingdom of God, what do you do? You begin to live the life of that kingdom. If not, you don't go to heaven. Because you enter the kingdom of God first before you enter the kingdom of heaven. It is, it is those who are in the kingdom of God who are now living the life of the kingdom of God that will enter in the kingdom of heaven. Am I saying something here? Those who have what? It is only those who have entered the kingdom of God and who are now living the life of that kingdom that will enter the kingdom of heaven. And that's why Jesus Christ said, it is not all that says to me, Lord, Lord, that will enter the kingdom of heaven. Matthew chapter 7 verse 21. So you enter the kingdom of God at first. Then when you enter, what do you now do in the kingdom of God? You now live the life of that kingdom before you can be permitted and admitted to go to heaven. That is the entire kingdom of heaven. If not that, you'll be disqualified. Many have been driven away from the kingdom of God and they don't know. They have become bastard and prodigals. They become, they become they become sons of perdition, they don't even know it. Are we gaining something? Hey, continue from where you are. You are finished verse 11. Are you done verse 11? Of where you, our text is Luke chapter 3 now, verse 11. You are done with verse 11. Go to the next verse. And let's see the, see the next thing. Even corrupt tax collectors mm -hmm. came to be baptized. Also, the tax collectors came to be baptized. Uh -huh. And they asked him, Teacher, what should we do? What should we do? Then he replied, mm -hmm. Collect no more taxes than the government requires. 14, what should no, we do? Praise the Lord. The tax collectors came to him now. Eh? And came to him and said, what should we also do based on what you have said so that we can bear the fruit of repentance? Eh? What did you tell them? Stop collecting what? Cheating people. Stop collecting more than necessary. You are supposed to collect 100, 100 naira stars. They will collect 100 naira for people. And then pocket 100 naira. Sign, write, write 100 naira for government. So what does that tell you? You must stop living a dubious life. You must stop doing what? Living dubious life. The task collectors, they were living kind of life. Corrupt and dubious life. Those who are living corrupt life, living dubious life. They, what are they? What is happening to them? They are not bearing fruit of repentance. It's not just about helping the poor alone. Helping the needy alone. But you must also what? You must also what? You must live a straightforward life. Your life must be transparent. You must be faithful. What is what he's saying to them now? Those tax collectors were not faithful. They were dubious. They were corrupt. And that is one of the problems we have today. 99% of people that go to church today, they are not faithful. Go and check their, their place of work. They are not faithful to their, to their employers. And that is why business are folding the nation. Because faithful man, the Bible says, who can find? There is gross lack of faithfulness in our time. People are not faithful, no faithfulness. And because the church is not in the discipleship, 
What are teaching now? What they should be doing? That is what we should be hearing when they go to church, not the junk that they are teaching them today. We were here on Sunday. Now. When one man came, I was teaching them this church close to us. I was this one that said, and I was I was spitting them, teaching them how to how to how to prosper. Is that what you teach in church? A church is a place of discipleship. Our members, people are. The most dubious people today in Nigeria, in our country, and several countries of the world are Christians. Dubious. Very corrupt. Very unfaithful. You can't, you can't trust them. And it's because of the pulpits. Like, 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 like pastor, like the people. That is what the Bible says. Like, he said, like the priest, like the, like the people, like the priest. So the, 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 the is, and that is what Jeremiah also says. Jeremiah 23, I think from verse 15. When you read from verse 10 to 15, he said from the priest and prophet, he said on faith, on he said profanity, that is ungodliness have entered into the land from the priest and the prophets. Ungodliness. Have you seen that place, Jeremiah 23? From verse 10, I think from verse 10 to 15, you see that along the line. There. On, on what? Ungodliness have, have, what? have covered the land from the priest and prophets. Amen. No faithful you don't say a faithful man who can find. John told the, the word, he told the task collectors, be faithful. Stop being corrupt. Stop cheating. Stop lying. Stop taking bright. Be faithful. Our, 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 our politicians are, 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 the, are the most corrupt. And the first is the pastors are the most corrupt. You are going, you are in a church. And then in church, you have two records. You collected the 100,000 as, as, as a monthly collection, tithe and offering. And then you recorded the 60,000 in the other record. And, and, then, and then you told the headquarters church that it was 6,000 that you got. And then you pay your, 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 your monthly uh, percentage from 60,000. And care for thousand. Pastor is away. Dickens and, and, the, and the elders are away. All of you, you're on your way to hell. Amen. You are a pastor. By your by stand of your ministry, you are supposed to have impress. Amen. You are supposed to you do expenses. You do expenses of fifty thousand. You wrote you do expenses of hundred thousand. You are what you are on your way to hell fire. And that was why. And this these are the reasons when you read our book. Understand what God saying to the churches now. Volume one and three. Volume one, two, three. Amen. This is part of the reason why the people of Judah went to captivity in Babylon. Unfaithfulness was over the land. They are not faithful. So you need to be faithful. And that was what he was telling the task collector. Be faithful. Do, do, be not dubious. If you have repented, now don't go back to this practice again. Let's go to the next verse. Verse 13. I think the soldiers now. Mm -hmm. Anybody can live from verse 13 if you are there. He replied, Collect no more taxes. That is Luke chapter 3, verse 13. Mm -hmm. Collect no more taxes than the government requires. Okay, mm -hmm. continue. What should we do? Ask some soldiers. Which verse is that? That verse 14. John replied, There's some soldiers ask John the Baptist also. What of Can soldiers go to heaven? What of us soldiers? What do we do? Mm -hmm. What do they do? Don't extort money. Don't worry. Extort money. money or make false accusations and be content with your pay. Hmm. Everyone was expecting the Messiah to come soon. And they were eager to know whether John might be the Messiah. No, stop the praise the Lord. He said be what? Be contented with your word, with your pay. So if you are not a contented person, you are not what? You are not bearing the fruit. So Part of what the fruit of the product is what is godliness with contentment. That is a great game. No extortion. No one. No extortion. Let me see what another version says. The NIV. That verse 14. NIV. Let me see what verse 15. There's your soldiers asking. Mm -hmm. And what should we do? Uh, we soldiers, what should we do? Don't extort money. And don't accuse people falsely. The police who are extorting money for people, all the people are extorting money. You want to do anything in this country now, they will extort money from you. Everybody, every office now. 
the road safety of, of I thought, immigration, police, soldiers, everybody, even civil servant in the office now. There is so much, our land has been polluted with extortion everywhere. So don't extort money. And don't what? And don't do what? After extortion, eh? Don't accuse people falsely. False accusation. Be content with your pay. False accusation. Amen. So when you look at it in all, what the John, John the Baptist is saying is that what? You need a change of life. If you are a tax collector, what you are doing before, stop doing it. What if you are a prostitute before? What should you do? Because if the prostitute have come to Jesus, to John, and I told them, stop doing prostitution. That is a sign that they are bearing the fruit of repentance. Have you? If drunkard asked John the Baptist, I'm sure he would have told them. Because when all each of them come, you tell them to what you are doing before. Don't do it again. I mean, is that not always so? Yes, so it means that any other person, you can fix yourself. If a prostitute, a, a fornicator came to John, what did you tell him? Stop fornicating. If the one who the world, who the world, who is living worldly life. Amen. Yes, and people are dressing worldly. What of those, those who are who are who are dressing and then dressing with the micro skirts? If they have come to John, what have you told them? Stop dressing like that. Dress like dress godly. So anybody you can begin to fix him. What is your own life? So the the in S in, in it all, in summary, whatever you are doing that you know is a sin or that is wrong. Stop doing it. Do Live a better life. And then what do you do also? Care for the poor. Care for the needy. Be faithful. Like Hezekiah. In, a, in a Second uh, Kings it, a 20, we read today, have you? Hezekiah turned to the wall and said, Lord, remember how I've been what? I've been faithful to you. Hallelujah. Amen. The fruit for repentance. We must teach these things. We must insist on it. We must live a life that we must live a life that shows how that we have decamped. Amen. When somebody is living in prison, does he have you seen anybody who was in prison before? You know, prisoners have clothes. Maybe one of these are taking people to prison. So you can see prison. Prisoners, they have what they call prison clothes. They used to wear clothes, prison clothes. They used to have clothes, they were prisoners. Yes. Have you seen anybody who has been free from prison and is wearing prison clothes about? Eh? The person has been set free from prison, but yet the clothes is wearing up and down with prison clothes. Have you seen that before? No. Nobody leaves prison and continue wearing prison clothes. So, how do you decamp from the camp of the devil and come to the camp of Jesus and you are still living the life of the devil? How? How do you decamp from the life of from the world and come to the kingdom of God and you want to live the life of the, of the world in the kingdom of God? It cannot go. You cannot pour new wine into old wine skin. It doesn't work. You have been set free from the prison of sin. So you can no longer continue to live the life of sin again. And if you do, then it means you are still in prison. That is the truth of the matter. These are the ethical issues. This is how it is by ethics of Christianity. Amen. He said the axe is lay at the bottom of the tree. Every tree that refused to bear fruit shall what? Shall be hewn down. So many we come to church, we are, we are coming there, hallelujah, praise the Lord. God don't know us. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 19. When you read that, he said, Let them, he said, for the foundation of the Lord stand it so. He said, and let them that what? That name the name, the name of the Lord depart from what? Iniquity. Depart from iniquity. For in the great house there are many vessels. Some of wood, some of straw, some of silver. Some of gold. 
some of it. He said, but whosoever project himself from this shall be a vessel unto honor, ready and made for the master's use. For the master's use. Ready and made for the master's use. Have you been punched? Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washing the blood of the Lord? Are you garments spotless and white and snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed? Are you washed in the blood? In the blood? In the so cleansing blood of the Lamb of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless and white than snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? There is a life that you should live. That what? That typifies, that proves both to God and to man. Because when you live this life, God knows. And that's why that is uh, 2 Timothy verse 19 from verse 2 verse 19. He said, The Lord knows those who are his. He knows them. Because they prove their worth to him by the life they live. They are not the, the person they used to be before. There is a great change since they met Jesus. It's a great change. It's a great change. Praise the Lord. Your life is not the same. Amen. Their life is a transformed life. They are not the same person. They are not living the same. They are the camp. They are camp. They are, their company is not the same again. You can't find them going to a nightclub again. You can't find them going to drinking joints again. You can't fly, find them playing the video music again. You can't find them watching Hollywood and Hollywood and watching all those nonsense they are showing on the screen again. No, they have changed camp. You, you see them now watching my Zion film, Abby? You see them now listen to what? Listen to Domwem. Amen. Listen to what? To godly music. Music that exalts their spirit. Not the music that, trigger, that triggers the appetite for, for fornication and immorality. Not film that they are watching and then, and then their body is rising to commit immorality because of what they are seeing. No, they've changed camp. They have changed friends. You can't see them working with, with fornicators of this world. People are fornicators and adulterers. You can't see them working with them. You can't see them. They have a different company. Amen. They are not living expensive life. They don't, they don't live expensive. They, they, they live a life of contentment. And because they live a contempt life, from what they have, they are able to help the poor also. Praise the Lord. Amen. They are able to help the poor. Of her sister was, was sharing with us that I think she paid almost 80% of her, of her, of her money as tithes. She does, she only keep 20, she keep pay 20, 80% as tithes. She used to help widows. She's helping us also in the ministry. And you want to, and you, and you want to compare yourself with that kind of person? Somebody who have laid, who is laid treasure in heaven? When you try to touch that kind of person, NJ Mango verse kill you quickly. They will not wait for God to give order. <laughs> they will kill you because they know that that one is an apple of the eye. And that's why they say, I will keep you as well, as the apple of my eye. When you live this life, you become the word. You become the apple of the eye of the Lord. Say, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. God will not become jealous over you. And you give the angel charge of you to bear you up so that you not dash your foot against the stone. And when the enemy come to you, what direction they shall what? They shall flee in seven directions. And no weapon fashion against you shall prosper. And the Lord will beat down your enemy that they shall begin to lease the, do the dust at your feet. And he pay table for you in the presence of your enemy. With length of days, he satisfies you. Let's begin to pray. Lord, please help me not to be, not to just be what? 
a lips Christian. Let me be a Christian that bear the fruit of repentance. Can you begin to pray in the name of Jesus? I will be a Christian that bear the fruit of repentance. I will not be this new modern Christianity. I will not practice this Christianity of 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 vanity. I will not be a greedy a Christian greedy of gain. No, I will be a contented Christian. I will be a Christian that will give to the poor, give to the needy. A Christian that will live a life of holiness and righteousness. Help me, Lord. Come, brado, shakatala la balai. Ezu bradia kashato libre gidi. Madado sakalabalabala. Indusi dizige legede. Legede gele. I will bear the fruit of repentance. Zumina he kaprodo samina galegede. Kushakalabarali. Amale bregede bobo kusu bregede bolo kushikatabala. Inde legede bolo bolo. Simbra gadabalish. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we should have not been looking for money for the Convert Discipleship Center. As we are looking for five million to buy the land, the farmland, we should have received, by now we should have received like hundred million. If we actually have people who are truly bearing the fruit of repentance. Amen. Amen. We have people that say, Pastor, they will call a pastor. Me, my, me, my, me, me and my family will come and build a chalet in that center for the converts. Mm. Amen. We shall not have problem. But the people, the people, we don't understand the ethics of this ministry. And that is why we are running after vanity everywhere. You go to the house of a Christian, he has eight different uh, exotic cars. He has, he's living in, he's living in, 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 in a house that, uh, in the next 20 years, he cannot enter some rooms. I'm not saying you should not invest. It's not what I'm saying. I'm talking investment. When, when, when you invest as a believer in, and, the, and the investment is eating, what, is, what do you do with what comes out of your investment? To support the work of God. To do what? To support the work of God. So that you can have where which you can stand and say, Lord, remember how our word have saved the faithful. I'm trusting the Lord that the Lord will help the church to come to this point. To know what is good to be done. To know the life to live. Let's go ahead and pray, Lord, help me. To live a life that is worthy of repentance. To bear the fruit worthy of repentance. In the name of Jesus. The Lord bless you, beloved brother and sisters. I remain your brother Moses or George Elimigo Special, the coordinator of the Global Christian Updates that has two vision and assignment point, the National Restoration Program and National Emergency Intervention Project. Currently, we are on a project to try to you know, raise a place, a farmland, get some hectares of farmland and use as a convert discipleship center where we bring convert from other religion, from Islam, from Buddhism, Hinduism, Paganism, Occultism, and they will give them a one year of discipleship training. And then, uh, you know, then we will now trust God to empower them also and launch them out. A lot of convert, especially from Islam, their life has been under threat. You know, especially in the northern Nigeria and some parts of uh, the country. So in the convert, they, they are ostracized. So we intend to bring them to the center. It will become a place of refuge for them. The project is on. You can support this project. It's going to cost a lot of resources. So you can contact the number on the screen that you are seeing. is a WhatsApp number. You can chat us or call us. We'll send your candidates and then you can part, partner with us in this project. The Lord will bless you richly in the name of Jesus. Don't forget to... If you are blessed by this message, to also share it, you know, with others, circulate it, and then also like it, press the like button and subscribe to this channel, so that as you like, you subscribe, then they will be able to, you know, make it to go viral. The Lord shall bless you. You can drop your question and your comment. The Lord will bless you richly in the name of Jesus. Till we come your way again. Shalom and God bless you.